Hello everybody. In continuing with our videos on probability, sometimes when you're trying to find the probability of something that's a little more complicated, it helps to draw out the sample spaces. A sample space is the collection of all possible outcomes in an experiment. So I've done some simple ones here to start. One way to show sample spaces is a tree diagram. So for instance, if the coin, uh, if the experiment is a coin flip, uh, this tree diagram is showing the collection of all possible outcomes, in this case, a heads or a tails. Another way to show that is in a table. So let's say we were doing two coin flips. I'm showing one of the coin flips on the top here and one of the coin flips on the side. And so uh, one of them, the first coin flip could be heads and the second could be heads, which would leave us with a heads heads. If this one is a tails and this one's a heads, we get heads, tails. We can get a tails, heads, and a tails, tails. So just by making a little table here, it really helps to see what the possibilities are. On, in this table here, I've shown uh, what can happen when you roll two number cubes, uh, which are a six-sided die. Um, so I've got these numbers in blue. So let's say one of them is blue and one of them is red. And so we could roll a a 1 and a 1, we could get a 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 3, a 1 and a 4, and so on. And then this next column is all 2s, so 2 and a 1, 2 and a 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, and so on. So what I'm going to do is pause the video until I finish filling out the whole chart for you because I don't think you need to watch me do all that. Um, okay, so now that I've finished filling out the table here, now we can use this table to help us answer some questions that wouldn't have been totally easy to answer before. So uh, we could say, well, what is the probability of rolling doubles? Okay, so you find all the doubles, so 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6. That happened 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. So remember the probability of doubles, we would write the number of favorable outcomes, which is 6 of them, 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, or 6s, over the total amount. And as you can see by this whole table, it's uh, 6 times 6. So there's 36 total outcomes here. And so the probability of rolling doubles is 6 over 36, which we reduce to 1 over 6. You could uh, ask what the probability of rolling at least one 3 is. Okay, at least a 3. So uh, that worked here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 times. So the probability of... Um, at least one three at least one three and so we decided that was 11 out of 36 which you can't reduce so that's it so you can see here it'd be really easy to answer questions about rolling to die if you had this sample space in front of you so that's really helpful now let's try uh, this next problem here burritos so when you go to a burrito place there's lots of choices. I'm simplifying it a little bit because this is our first example. But um, let's say our choices were chicken or beef in our burrito and mild salsa, spicy salsa, or no salsa at all. We can make a pretty easy tree diagram showing all the possible burritos you can make given these choices. Um, so let's do that. So our first choice would be chicken or beef. And so we could say, well, we could have got chicken or we could have got beef. And if we got chicken, we could have gotten mild salsa, we could have gotten spicy salsa, or no salsa at all. Um, so we could have gotten chicken mild, chicken spicy, or chicken no. And then over on the beef side, we could have got beef mild, we could have got beef spicy, or we could have got beef uh, no salsa. And so we'd say beef mild beef spicy and beef no salsa. And so now we can a answer questions about the different possible uh, burrito combinations or we can just figure it out. Um, we can see how many choices 
uh, we had there. Um, notice whenever there's a choice, you have branches coming off to show the results of the possible choice, right? Um, now let's see how many outcomes there were here. There was one, two, three, four, five, six different outcomes. Oops, six different outcomes. And let's look back here. Notice in this table there were 36 outcomes. Okay, and over here we had four outcomes, and over here we had two outcomes. So how are we deciding on these outcomes? Well, there's something called the counting principle. Let's go to a new page here. So the counting principle. And it says, suppose there are m ways of making one choice and n ways of making a second choice. Then there are m times n ways to make the first choice followed by the second choice. Okay, so um, m choices followed by n choices um, gives us m times n uh, possibilities. All right, so that's kind of weird because I have some variables in here. Like, what's m choices and n choices? as Well, uh, let's give an example. So in the burrito problem, we have uh, two choices. Let me uh, slide this down a little bit. So in the burrito problem, we have two choices uh, followed by three choices gives us two times three or six possible outcomes. Okay, um, and in the case of the number cubes, um, we can consider these choices, right? We have six choices or six possibilities in the first uh, roll. So six followed by another six gives us six times six, 36 possibilities, right? Let's go back here. Uh, two choices or two outcomes, these two, heads, tails, followed by two outcomes, these two, gives us two times two, which is four possible outcomes, which one, two, three, four. And here's the coin flip. That's just one. There's not two things happening. Notice the uh, the counting principle happens when there's more than one thing happening, right? So two coin flips, two die, two choices, right? Or two or two different levels of choice here. Uh, one coin flip doesn't really need the counting principle. It's pretty obvious. There's two choices here, two outcomes. Okay. Um, so if we had five shirts and three pairs of pants, how many total outfits could we make? Well, five times three, 15 outfits. That's the counting principle. All right, that's going to be it for uh, this video. Thanks for watching.